AI in Action is brought to you by Aulis International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldis.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Alix Lacoste. Alix is the VP of Data Science for Benevolent AI. Alix, welcome to the show. Great. Well, if you could start by giving us a little bit of background of yourself and how you got involved in technology and then telling us a little bit about your current role in Benevolent. Sure. So um, I started out with an interest more in biology. And specifically, I was interested in understanding the normal and the disease brain and also behavior. Um, so that led me to do a PhD in um, molecular and cell biology, specialized in neuroscience at Harvard. Um, during the PhD, I really enjoyed the data analysis aspect. So I gathered a lot of different types of data from imaging to electrophysiology, et cetera. Um, and I just realized it was so much fun to make sense of it um, and, and really derive insights from the, the deep questions that we had about it. So I transitioned to data science, um, but obviously wanted to stay in the health domain. So I went to IBM Watson Health, um, had a good four or five years there. And then about a year and a half ago, I went to Benevolent AI. So currently... I lead and grow a team of um, AI scientists, data scientists, also software engineers, and we work together with biologists and chemists to evaluate and uh, improve our processes throughout the company. Uh, So it's really data science applied to understanding where we can best make an impact based on really deep scientific evaluation of our products, our pipelines. So it's really working across tech and science, which is one of the most fun parts of my job. Um, And then I'm also part of the leadership team at the company that really sets the the vision and strategy for us. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Um, We see a lot of interest for data science within healthcare, life sciences, health tech. What's unique about benevolent AI that people may not be aware of? Yeah, so the reason I joined is that um, it's really the only um, end-to-end drug discovery company I was at Pinonicus at the time when I joined. Um, And we really go from data to drugs. We apply um, AI and analytics in four different areas um, that I can talk about uh, more later, but essentially uh, it's about um, our our knowledge graph, um, integrating a lot of uh, data, scientific data, both structured uh, from databases um, and um, assay results um, internally and externally. Um, And then also unstructured data from from literature mining. Um, So that's one of the parts then we uh, reason on this data for different purposes. One is uh, to identify the the right uh, molecules in the body that we want to drug. That's target identification. Then we also work to find the right target for the right patient, so the the right molecule for the right patient. Uh, That's our precision medicine area. And then uh, finally, uh, we apply also our AI analytics to um, coming up with the right drug, the right compound. Um, So that's really really how we're completely end-to-end, and that differentiates us from um, both pharma companies and also tech platform companies, because really we're both essentially um, bio and tech. Um, so how we're different from pharma is that we really start with tech. It's at the foundation of what we do. It's not really, it's something that we're trying to retrofit, whereas um, you know pharma is really um, make, putting a lot of effort into that right now, but they really did start out with tech, so it makes everything much more complicated. Just even figuring out where the data is in a pharma company, it's it's quite challenging. Um, So we we work with pharma, that said, for collaboration with, and it's super useful for us to learn from them and from their expertise. Um, And so we're also different from platform companies, um, like actually IBM Watson, where I was before, um, because we can really test our platform throughout the drug discovery pipeline. Um, So it's not just about optimizing small parts of the process in isolation. 
without being able to ultimately test their impact. Um, as some people would say, we basically eat our own dog food, right? Meaning we really use our products to advance our own pipeline of uh, indirect discovery. And so we really use the data that we generate, the, the biology and chemistry data to advance and learn uh, and advance our pipeline. Thank you. Very interesting stuff. Um, you've got somewhat of a unique perspective on the impact AI can have on healthcare, both from the health tech perspective and AI in life sciences. Could you give us some sort of insight of where you see this going and what it, what's coming down the line in terms of innovation driven by AI and technology? Sure. So I think in the life sciences, um, you know, it's still early days, which makes it uh, really exciting, but also difficult. Um, what, what's different from the application of AI in life sciences versus um, healthcare is that um, in life sciences, we're still very much in discovery mode. In healthcare, at least you kind of know what the outcome you're looking for. Um, so the, the metrics that we use traditionally, for example, for model building or for evaluating how good the AI models are, when you're in discovery mode, sometimes they're not nuanced enough. So um, another issue that we have is that we have very few uh, positive examples often, right? They're, we're looking at uh, diseases that don't have treatment, right, that have been advanced in the clinic. So we have to uh, use proxy, proxies for positive examples. And then much of biology is also completely unknown. So working in an AI, um, applying AI algorithms when there are a few positive examples, most of the knowledge is actually unknown. And there's often not much negative examples either because um, scientists will be the first one to tell you that it's not because it didn't work in an assay that it's definitely negative, right? Um, so the absence of positive um, does not mean it's negative. So it just, it makes it really hard to train and be confident that we're improving but that said, you know, I think there's a really tremendous uh, potential in drug discovery because it's really one of the industries that uh, hasn't quite yet been disrupted by AI. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a long road because we have to work um, across expertise. Um, and that, that can be really challenging. Also, as I mentioned before, extremely rewarding. One example of really the the experts in AI and the experts in biology working together is um, one of our algorithms for target identification. So that's finding kind of the right um, gene or molecule to a drug in your body. Um, we, on one of our AI scientists, uh, developed this reinforcement learning algorithm. Um, and uh, he was tuning the reward function of the reinforcement learning algorithm um, uh, with the drug discovery scientist, they were really sitting together. Um, what they were doing is they were essentially looking at the paths that the, the algorithms took because it was a path-based algorithm. Um, and then was we're looking at which paths to emphasize, meaning like to reward versus which, which ones to punish based on um, uh, the outcome, uh, based on looking at the predictions that the algorithms algorithm made. So for example, some of the paths to punish were ones where the algorithms kind of went through toxic pathways. And so, um, you know, it really took the drug discovery scientists to, to, to see that. But then obviously it takes the AI expert to know how to best tune the, the algorithm to um, get to the best answer and, and an understanding of the inner workings of it. Um, so in general, I think, yeah, drug discovery, you know, is a long process. So um, it's it's tough uh, to to work in also because we can't do A-B testing very easily, for example, right? So we can't just um, uh, test um, our algorithms extremely quickly in the lab. It, it often takes, you know, months or if not years. Uh, so we have to develop kind of intermediate or proxy measures of long-term success. Could you give us some insight into some projects that you're personally excited about that you're currently involved in? Sure. So one project I'm particularly excited about is um, around uh, glioblastoma. So um, we're trying to find novel targets, so again, um, parts of your body, uh, genes or proteins that we can target. Um, glioblastoma is, is really uh, an aggressive form of cancer. It's actually the, the most common cancer that begins in the brain. Um, 
and uh, it's uh, its incidence is about 100,000 people that develop the disease a year. Um, and without treatment, the, the survival rate is actually about three months. So it's really um, devastating for people who get affected. Um, and the, one of the issues is essentially that the treatment, the cancer recurs. So you can try a surgery, um, there's a, a chemotherapy that's offered, but often within actually 12 to 15 months, the patient dies because that cancer recurs. And what happens um, from a biology st standpoint is quite interesting is it seems like there are these um, cells that are cancerous that are kind of dormant and they're kind of all over the, the brain. Um, we call them glioblastoma stem cells. Um, and so they can't really be taken out by surgery because they're kind of throughout the brain. And uh, chemotherapy doesn't necessarily get to them because there are cells that are not replicating and that's what the chemotherapy is targeting. So we're um, finding novel approaches to really target these cells that are the cause of, we think is the cause of the cancer reoccurring. So it's a really um, exciting project. We have really amazing talent in-house. Um, we have great partners as well. Um, academic um, partners looking at this, and it's just it's you know it's an area that's really crying out for new approaches. So uh, we we do multiple rounds of target identification with the tech, um, and and we test those, and then we take the learnings back from the experiments to actually improve our our systems. Wow, uh, I mean if if AI can res and data science can result in impacting such diseases like that, then what an incredible story. Um, focusing on yourself, um, because you've obviously given us some insight into your role and your background, which clearly borders both your science background and now more, more technical. Um, can you talk to us about what you love about your job currently? Yeah, so related to the, the story about glioblastoma, you know, that's really what motivates me every day is, is the, the chance to have an impact on, on the lives of people. Um, and we're pr particularly looking at um, areas where, you know, pharma has given up potentially because um, traditional approaches to drug discovery are too darn expensive. Um, and so I think we really have a chance to really critically disrupt that. So that's really what my main motivation and what I, I love uh, about this job. Um, the other part is that we're really working on incredibly complex problems. So um, I love that I have to, um, you know, uh, think about multidimensional problems um, with multidimensional data with lots of caveats. Um, my brain hurts sometimes when I <laughs> read papers and, um, you know, talk uh, with, with people across the, the company in different fields. Um, so that's super interesting. Um, and often also because we're working on such difficult problems, um, there's no perfect option, there's no perfect solution. So really exercising good um, judgment and sound decision making is really critical. So um, that's an area that I, I also um, love to exercise in my brain. Um, and then as I said before, also working at the intersection of different fields, um, you know, I get to dive deep both in uh, machine learning, going to machine learning conferences, but also in drug discovery, reading papers, um, going to conferences, talking with my uh, colleagues who are experts. Um, so speaking about colleagues, you know, that's also what I love about this company. I mean, we're really motivated by our mission, um, super smart group of people, really a joy to work with. Um, and uh, for example, this morning we had uh, a retro on our, um, on our team and how we did this quarter. So we're coming to the end of the year. Um, and I had a, a colleague said that uh, he really liked the, the freedom to operate and think outside the box to raise uh, more serious questions about the value of what we do with, with the team that I built. So that, that was really rewarding to hear as well. Um, and um, another thing I like is, is really mentoring people as well, empowering them to grow and really be the, their best selves. Um, I think that's how we build. Uh, a great company and uh, and actually have the most impact, right? Um, so seeing people thrive and, and also being there with them on the challenges is super rewarding. Absolutely. Um, 
I want to focus on the team. You, you mentioned there some of the ro- rewards that you get. So I want to get some insight uh, on some of the challenges that you faced um, building this team, because clearly um, not just yourself, but this is very, very industry focused. And not only do you have to find incredible data scientists, data engineers, but you've also got to find people who have the foundation level understanding of the science. Mm-hmm. Um, and that creates a whole other layer of, of challenges. So it'd be good to, to hear what you face, what challenges you face, and what you've had to do to overcome those challenges in building a team. Yeah, great question. Um, it's you know, we ask, especially the data scientists, we ask them for everything to have uh, good domain knowledge and also, you know, great problem solving skills, software engineering skills, uh, statistics. You know, I think as you know, being in the recruitment field, it's um, it's just a lot that we ask for data scientists. Um, so I think the building the interview system so that it focuses a lot on uh, problem solving and the ability to kind of learn through the interview is something that I find works quite well. So making sure that um, the candidate is really engaged throughout the process, um, is excited about the question, um, you know, really works with the interviewer to um, understand the question, um, find creative solution, but also uh, make sure make sure to um, drive towards impact and, and really solution building. Um, so I think we have uh, interviews um, that really focus on that, on, on kind of those problem solving skills. Um, and then I think once you have a, a great team, uh, which we do have, so obviously we're, we're continuing to, to look for people. Um, but I think one, one thing that I find a little challenging is uh, to keep the balance between creativity and innovation and then the need to really build sustainable products um, that we can craft and optimize in the long term. Um, so um, based on the nature of what we do, you know, people are really curious and um, excited to, um, to to build things and, and develop new ideas. So we tend to have a lot of people like that who love to you know, build prototype. Uh, but then it, it kind of takes another part of the brain or other types of people to really transform those prototypes into pr- products. Um, so there's this notion you've probably heard of of pioneers versus settlers, right? And I think we have a lot of pioneers at Benevolent AI. And so we, we also need you know, to hire more settlers who really are excited about uh, bringing solutions to full bloom. Um, but you know, ultimately, I think the people we look for and the people who join are really motivated by the impact. So they have this kind of whatever it takes attitude. So even if they have to do some of the grunt work of productionizing stuff sometimes, um, it actually works. it works really well. And yeah, I think finally, I think creating a a great data science team and retaining a great data science team um, is also, or team in general, is really about creating a diverse team when where employers, um, employees rather, really bring their authentic selves to work, um, um, are really honest with each other, especially in such a difficult scientific field. Um, And that's the way that we can really be most effective and impactful together. Um, and also have a lot of fun doing it. Great. Well, look, I think um, this is one of these interviews where I'm, I'm very excited to see what you guys can accomplish in the next few years. I think it's uh, it's an interesting space, um, right for disruption, as you said, but it, disruption in the best possible way. So we wish you all the best on your ventures, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. AI in Action is brought to you by Aulus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Aulus offer an exec search program. Aulus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. Get the Aulus advantage. Become a member of the Aulus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all the members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career and more. Become an Aldous member and get the Aldous advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldous.com. That's www.aldus.com.
All is international, empowering through AI.